Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Drew Deke Show. This is a completely different episode. You're really used to seeing hockey and sports content on this channel. But today I've got a very special guest, a friend of mine and someone I, I think I can say is a brother because he's been such an inspiration and, you know, just a positive, positive light in my life since I met him back in 2012, which seems like eons ago, Adam. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce my friend, Adam Alderks. Hey, everybody. How you doing? You know, it's really easy to say, okay, like I work with Dwayne Johnson, who's, you know, the most successful actor in Hollywood right now, where, you know, that's, that's one thing, but like, this is about Adam's journey, right? So how do you like go work with a guy like him and then just try to, you know, take what you can and also just be authentic to you and worry about your journey? Oh, it's, it's, it's actually not difficult to do. Um, I view him more as mentors um more as just like guidance uh Dwayne Johnson did so and every every celebrity that I've ever worked with I walked away I learned something you know how it's you how you talk to people how you handle a, a, being on set is stressful the moment they roll camera money is being thrown out the window so when you're talking about a 40 million dollar budget that's a lot of money that is just being thrown away so like tempers flare things happen and hearing like how a celebrity addresses those situations on set. Um, uh, I don't want to name drop him, but I got to give him props. So I got to do it. I got the ability to work with Tom Hanks and watch. I mean, I toy story. I mean, come on. I mean, toy story, polar express, all these wonderful movies that you forget. He's the voice of them Forrest Gump and watching how that man just he he ran the Marriott puppet of everybody's emotions and kept everybody happy. And when thing was stressful, we had one moment. Um, we had one moment we were on set with, with Mr. Hanks, and it was very like like things were happening. And all of a sudden, I heard the voice go, "There's a snake in my boot." And we were like, "That's Woody from Toy Story. What is happening right now?" You know and he just knew the exact thing to say at the right time to kind of bring everything back day. It's all going to be okay. So it's, it's no, I mean, Tom Hanks and, and Dwayne Johnson are earth famous. Like there are villages in the Amazon that know who they are. Right. So watching someone of that, that class still treat the most, the guy who takes out the trash, still treating him with such respect. And it's like, I got to remember that. Or with Dwayne Johnson, when he, we uh, wrapped the day on set and he had like 200 some people outside of his trailer in a designated space. And he got out of his car and they were going nuts. And he goes, don't leave. Let me change out so they can do their job. I'll be right there. Don't leave. And Dwayne Johnson doesn't have to do it. Dwayne Johnson just walked. He was like a Moses right between everybody and did not leave until every single person was happy. 200, 300 people remember that that's how you treat people remember that that's how you treat people seeing um how like a pa on set production assistant might be the worst job on the planet you get treated like dog food it's awful and watching these celebrities always trying to make hey you okay can i get you something I, you're always getting me coffee can i get you coffee right now you know and it's it's those it's it's yeah okay so it's being able to say those names in the conversation is, is very humble and that's great but when you see the human side of it, it's like, wow, I, I need to harness those skills. I need to take that. Everybody's flawed. Everybody has something that they're not proud of, right? That they did, they reacted a certain way, said something, whatever it is. But everybody also has good. And so you can learn something from everybody and take a little bit, take a little bit, take a little bit. And in some cases it's been, they were such a terrible, terrible person I took that from there and say, okay, I'm never going to be like that. I'm never going to treat somebody like that. That's not cool. And so, you know, it's as far as being on screen and, and sharing camera time with them and being in the scene with them, you know, sometimes you got to kiss the butt, you know, whatever it is and stuff. And if, if they're the star, it's all about them. My character is, is second into them. So they have to have a, it only pushes it only pushes it pushes me further to wanting to focus harder 
because I want to be there someday, right? I see those those actors, actresses in that moment. I want to be there someday. And it encourages me further to, to dig harder, to push deeper, to break the rules, challenge myself, challenge myself creatively. Have I read a book today, you know, versus Netflix? You know, what have I done? Am I staying up on the shows? Am I marketing my career, you know? And so it's, it's, it's a pretty great opportunity. If you get a chance, and that goes for any business. If you're in a sport, the, the MVP is the MVP because he's probably pretty darn good. Maybe you should pay attention. Maybe it's not a competition. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned or a CEO or a CFO or whatever there is. I mean, you can learn something from everybody. And if, if you can, if you can twist, if you can learn to twist everything as motivation for your own career, you're going to have a really fun career. Really fun. Okay. I'm watching, like, we really like the show Bo, my wife and I, and I didn't Bo? even know you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Michael didn't Weatherly. Know- yeah. <laughs> didn't even know you're on it and you end up being the friggin' bad guy in the show. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, <laughs> dude, dude, I'm always the bad guy. It never, when I get a booking, I'm like, all right, what, what episode do I get killed off in? <laughs> Whenever I book a good guy, I'm like, you know, this is Adam, right? Did, did you call the right person? This is Adam. You know, he's like, yeah, no, no, you're the good guy. And I'm like, this is weird. I don't even know what to, you know, but, um, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know if it's my my face or what or my energy. I'm always the bad guy, dude. Oh well. It's funny because when I knew you in back in uh, Florida, they're like you were serious, but like you were still cool and down to earth. So <laughs> I don't know where that yeah. comes from, man. I don't get the bad guy vibe. But um, what was the TV set like versus the film set? Apparently, TV sets are more stressful because it's faster. But you tell me. Um. Oh man. <laughs> It's, it's, it's really difficult unless you're there. Um, filming is not what you think it is. It, it, it is not like two people and you're like action and cut. That was awesome. What's the next scene? You, I mean, if you and I are having this conversation on camera and we're face to face, they're going to shoot the wide master shot first and then they're going to do it again and then they're going to do it again and then they're going to probably do that two or three times. And then they're going to come over the shoulder from here and pick up yours. And they're going to do that over and then back to one and over and back to one and over and back to one. And, oh, and then they're going to go on this side and then they're going to go from over your shoulder. And typically they shoot it until it's completely dead and there's no more life. And you're just, you're, you're not even thinking anymore because the lines you've done them 30 times and you're just like, can we please wrap this? I'm hungry. Like, let's wrap this up. And so if anybody wants to be an actor, I'll say this about any sport. If anybody wants to go do that, whatever that is for them, go apprentice first and see what does that look like. If you want to be a financial stockbroker, why don't you go see what that actually looks like? Or if you want to be a mortgage broker, you have no life. Why don't you go see what that looks like? Or if you want to be an actor, go be an extra and hear the word back to one 10,000 times that day on the film set and when you're like this is this is this is awful i don't like this at all maybe acting is not for you right maybe there's a different way but um most of the time uh, a network cbs nbc you know uh, whatever it might be they usually have a big warehouse and it's a, a it's called a sound stage and it's all insulated and then they build out the stage from in, you know on there so like the courtroom that i was in that was in a, a big pole shed. Think of a big like steel shed that's all insulated. And then they get great craftsmanship carpenters that get in there and they turn it into an actual like courthouse. You walk in and, and all of a sudden they're like, all right, that's lunch. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm not in a courthouse right now. And then you got to get out and you walk into the alley, you know, and uh, typically like if you were going to look at it from an aerial looking down, they're all chopped up in like this room right here that's that's like the courthouse and that room right there is like the bedroom you'll need to do later on and that one over there that one is like the kitchen and so they chop everything up and then it's all under you know their control they control lighting weather whatever it is and um everything you see on tv is fake everything you see in the tabloids is fake 
everything you see ever. If they're eating something, it's probably not, they're probably not actually eating it. You've told me personally, like we had a really good discussion online, even just through messenger, a lot of the hardships you went through just in right. life in general. And then as an actor, you know, how did that sort of mold you shape you, you know, like you're on the course, man, like you've decided you're on this journey, you're sticking on it. You're not getting out of this lane. So that kind of laser focus, how do you get there? And like, you know, what, why do you want to do this so bad? I don't want to be cliche. That's kind of annoying, but like steel sharpens steel, right? Iron sharpens iron. And so everybody wants to be prom king. Let's call it what it is. Everybody wants to be popular. Everybody wants to have a ton of friends, right? I, I have two. I have two friends. My girlfriend's great, but I have, I have two friends, Elon and Doug. And like, I, I would give them a kidney if I had to, like, we're on that level. And I have a lot of acquaintances, a lot of acquaintances and stuff. But when you first start, and I would say this is probably any, any industry, when you first start, you're trying to be prom king and you're trying to win the popular vote and you're trying to make everybody happy. And you're, you're finding yourself conflicted because you're, you know, the person that you're married to or with isn't happy or your, your friend is mad because you had to skip their birthday and stuff. And all of a sudden relationships start disappearing and you burnt a bridge there on accident, but the way they reacted, you were like, oh, I don't like that. It is, you know, and suddenly your social circle starts doing this. And then all of a sudden you have two guys that they know everything about you, everything. That's, that's all I need. That's I'm good. That's it. You know? And I, I kind of coined this phrase a while back, and uh, I think this will summarize it up, but um, this, is, this has been my journey and this is my battle cry when I'm going through stuff. If you declare war on your dreams, your army will assemble themselves. My focus is here, the people that I need in my corner to help push me along the way, to help drive it, they'll come out of the woodwork. They'll, they'll, they'll come out of places you never even knew existed. A message on Instagram. I saw the movie. I don't, you don't know me. It doesn't matter. You really affected my life. Thank you. Cool. I got that. A friend that you didn't even know was a friend. All of a sudden they're backing you and they're like, they're encouraging you in a way that you didn't know you needed it. You know? So if you are focused on your dreams, if you declare war, on your passions and goals and dreams and career, whatever that is, if you focus, your army will assemble themselves. And all of a sudden, one day you'll look around and you got some pretty great people in your corner that are making sure that you make it to where you're trying to get to.